Hi guys, so about four years ago I did a video on the molar stroke and doing it in a compact space and I'll link to that video up here um, and it, this video will make more sense if you watch that one or at least know the stuff that's in it already. Um, so if you don't get this, try that first. Uh, and in that video I said I would do a follow-up video about uh, what I'm going to talk about today and it turns out someone finally mentioned to me, hey, you never did that follow-up video. And so since it's been four years and since someone pointed it out, I thought I might actually go ahead and, and go do the part two to that thing that I never did. So the first video is of course on molar strokes, which is the whipping motion. And I showed in some detail uh, how to do downstrokes and upstrokes. Now in this video, we're going to talk about when you do groups of three, the triple molar stroke, where you incorporate taps into your up and down stroke sequence. So it depends on where in the sequence you are, which note is the tap, which note is the up, which is the down, um, depending on what you're doing. But it follows the same principle. So what we're going to do uh, is to recap, you have a down stroke, which is whipped down like this, and you have an up stroke that is essentially just a setup for your next downstroke. And the tap comes between those two. So if you've played a downstroke, then you can incorporate a tap, and then you go into your next upstroke. So it seems like because this is a fluid technique, everything should be a continuous motion. And that's not necessarily the case. When you play this, there is sort of a pause at the bottom for you to play your tap before you initiate the up. So if I'm doing up and down, I'm going to do this and a sort of natural rebound between the strokes is going to make it appear to, and actually, you know, really is, going to flow one into the other. There's no gaps, no pauses, no recalibration of the motion. I do a down, then I do an up, where I can do an up and then do a down, right? There's no rhyme or reason to either way being different. Um, it's just a smooth flowing motion. But when you add the tap stroke into the middle to make groups of three, you actually have to pause, and it seems semi-unnatural at first. You're going to play your down stroke, then you're going to just play a wrist stroke, or you could play a finger stroke if you really wanted to. And then, completely separate, you're going to come back up. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. So your hand sort of pauses in the middle. And show it with this hand. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up. You can see the faster I go, the smaller I make the motion. I can exaggerate it, but I don't really need to move that far. Now, if you are trying to do this uh, and get the accented note, the downstroke, to fall in a different part of the beat, you have to change where you start in the motion, but you don't change the order of the motions, which is sometimes a little bit confusing. So I was mostly playing the accent on the downbeat. One, two, three. One, two. If I want to change that to playing the accent on the third note of the thing, I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm not reversing the order, I'm just starting on a different spot. If I start on the tap, tap, up, down, then I get the accent on the third note. If I start on the down, down, tap, up, the accent comes on the first note. And if I wanted the accent to be on the middle note, I would go up, down, tap, up, down, tap. Again, the order not really changing, we're just starting at a different point in the sequence. So because the tap is not an accented note, it's one of the unaccented notes out of the three, it doesn't have to be very big. I can actually do um, my tap very tiny, my upstroke very tiny, and then still get a decently loud accent. And I'm only moving about this far, right? I don't, again, need to do this whole big thing in most contexts. Okay, so if you're wondering why on earth you would be doing this triple molar stroke, there's a couple of common things 
that it can be used for, although these are not exhaustive of all the things. Um, one thing is if you're playing like a 6-8 or a 12-8 ride cymbal or hi-hat pattern and you want to have that driving downbeat feel, that one-handed stroke in threes actually makes sense. Again, another way to do it is if you're playing triplets and you want to have an accent on the downbeats with single strokes between your hands. Uh, it spreads out the motions, but you're still doing it on both hands. If I just play one hand on the drum and one hand on my leg, you should be able to see that even though it's split out between six notes, the one hand is still doing the exact same three-step molar stroke. So again, exaggerating, but you can build that up. And both hands are doing it just in succession. Okay, so I hope that was semi-informative about uh, molar strokes with a tap in the middle in groups of three. And by molar stroke, I mean a modern drum set friendly small version of the molar stroke, not the big actual, you know, Civil War motion. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.